So now we can begin to talk about you know, introducing nonlinearities into our uh, simple regression function, or simple regression model, I should say. Um, and so when we say linear regression, we mean linear in parameters. We don't necessarily mean linear in variables. So we can introduce some nonlinear variables that will help us uh, in certain situations to have better interpretation or to better uh, reflect what we might think the relationship between two variables, variables might be. Um, so if you remember, so one example is maybe we had uh, wage equals beta zero plus beta one times years of education plus that error term. And so here, a one year increase in education is causing wage to go up by beta one. Well, maybe that's not a great way to think about this relationship to, between education and wages. Maybe a better way to think about this relationship Uh, this relationship, and by this I mean between education and wages, is that another year of education increases um, wages by a constant percentage. So in that sense, if we wanted to get that relationship, this is the model which we could write down. So in this course, if I ever say log, it's, it's always natural log, kind of true in most econ. So here now we've kind of transformed our variable. Instead of just being wage, it's the log of wage as our dependent variable. And so let's think about how we can interpret um, this beta one now and why this interpretation looks like this. So I'm gonna quickly erase this and then we'll kind of do some math to show why the interpretation of this beta one is now looking like this. All right, so let's rewrite that regression function up here. Log of wage equals beta zero plus beta one uh, education plus that error term. And now to understand, um, to understand the interpretation, we're gonna think about taking the derivative of both sides of this, uh, this equation. And so we have the change in the log of wage equals uh, the change in education times beta 1. But we know this change in the log of wage, if we remember from first year calculus, that's just the change in wage over the wage equals, and we'll just leave this other side the same way or the same as it was before. That's just multiplied. I'm just, for some reason, putting stars on there today. Um, and then we can think, I mean, this is the change in wage over wage. Well, that starts to look like something we might know about, right? If we multiplied both sides by 100, We're going to get um, 100, and we're going to rearrange as well. 100 times, oops, just need a 100 times the change in wage over wage. So I need bigger brackets here. We're going to move this back under here. So d wage equals 100 times beta 1. And if we look at this numerator here, well, that's, you know, for small changes in, in wage, that's a percentage change in wage. Right? So, oops, I screwed up here. This should be education. Sorry. 
I rearranged it and just like Klaus made a mistake. So this is the numerator is like the percentage change in wages over the change in education equals 100 times this beta 1 value. So let's just rewrite that here. So 100 times beta 1 equals the percentage change in wage, that's percentage, not percentage points, over the change in education. So assuming this is a small change here. This pen's dying on me a bit, so let's try something else, different color even. So how to think about this is 100 times beta 1 um, can be interpreted as the percentage change in wage for a unit increase in education. So by just by transforming our dependent variable by taking the natural log of it, this has changed the interpretation of our beta 1. Now 100, 100 times the value for beta 1 is how um, is the percentage change in wage for a one unit increase in education. So for a one year increase in education causes our wages to go up by 100 times beta 1 percent. So let's erase this. We'll do a really quick example. Then we can start to see what happens when we put the log on the right hand side and then both sides. So now we can think about uh, just doing a quick example of that interpretation. So let's say we got our information and we ran the regression in Stata. So again, it's an estimate. We know we estimated this relationship because of the hat on the log uh, equals, let's say, 3.26. Again, let's say it's hourly wage plus 0.24 times education. So this is our beta hat zero and this is our beta hat one. And so the interpretation of this is an additional year of education um, is associated or is predicted to to cause um, with a 24% uh, increase in wages. So throughout, throughout this course, we just have to be a little careful with percent versus percentage points, right? So here, an additional, we have 0.24 is our beta hat one. So we multiply this by 100, so it becomes 24. And so what the interpretation of this beta hat one is, this estimate that we got, is an additional uh, one year of education or one year, one unit increase in education is associated with a 24% increase in wages. So we've done one of, you know, we can think of you know, three different options. So the first one that we just talked about is if we have a log on the um, dependent variable. I guess we've been using x1 there. So we just talked about that. And so what that does is it changes it. So beta 1, 100 times beta 1 is the percentage change in y from a one unit change in x. But we can think about putting the log on the right hand side. So now y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times log of x1. Again, natural log, whenever I say log. We could do the same thing for this. We could take the derivative of both sides, see that dy equals um, beta 1 times the change in the log of x1. We can go through those same rules again. And what we'd get is beta 1 over 100 is the change in y over um, the percentage change of ch change of percentage 
percentage change, I should say, in x, an x1, I guess, here. If we did that same, those same steps in terms of uh, what we just did for when we had the log on the y variable. And so the interpretation of this would be beta 1 over 100 can be interpreted as the increase in y from a 1% increase in x. So it's about now that we have the log on the x1, beta 1 divided by 100 is the change in y from a percentage change in x. So notice that percentage change is around whatever's on the log here. Then you just have to remember if you need to divide this beta 1 by 100 if you want it on the if it's on the dependent or independent variable and beta 1 times 100 if it's on the dependent variable. So then we have kind of one last um, nonlinearity to talk about, and that's if we have logs on both sides. So let's look at that. It'll be percentage changes on each, which is something we can kind of remember from maybe first year econ in terms of interpretation. So let's take a look. So we've covered, if we have the, the natural log convert, uh, the natural log on the dependent variable. So we've covered this first one. We just did the log transformation on the uh, independent variable, the x. And now we can think of this last one as maybe we have a log transformation on both. So if we did the same, if we did the same thing, we could take the derivatives of both sides and rearrange, remembering that the derivative of log of y is change in y over uh, y. Um, if we did the same steps, we'd get the following. Beta 1 is the percentage change in y over the percentage change in x. Percentage change in one variable over the percentage change in another. Well, we know what that's called in economics. That's an elasticity. So it's an elasticity, um, I mean, of y with respect to x, I guess I should say. So here we're saying you know, a 1% change in x1 is causing a beta 1% change in y, which is, by definition, we call that an elasticity in economics. So beta 1 is the elasticity of y with respect to x.